What are some common performance bottlenecks in Apache Spark applications? Uh, the bottlenecks, uh, usually the bottlenecks or various bottlenecks are available. Like the major one are like uh, data skew issue, like the data was not distributed properly equal to the all the uh, executors. Like one executor has some uh, more data and some executors has very less data So to process this one. So uh, this is also one of the uh, bottleneck. And uh, we also have the executor uh, misconfiguration. So people usually do not calculate the right uh, uh, configuration for the job. So this actually slowed on their job and inefficient uh, shuffling process like uh, when they are doing the shuffling process like using the group by or joining operations so they'll use the uh, default shufflings so th that actually uh, you know causes the networks and uh, writing a lot of data to the disk and uh, writing the lot of over increasing a lot of overhead which also uh, increases the job or it it sometimes leads to out of memory issues as well and tasks also will get struggler due to this uh, uh, data ski issue like um, one task can uh, run forever and some task will finish it in a uh, much faster and uh, the memory management and uh, non-optimal shuffle partition counts so when we are giving the shuffle partition so we need to give the optimal uh, shuffle partitions uh, how can you optimize the shuffle operations in spark okay so shuffle operation in spark is the most uh, costly operations uh, not only in the spark in big data in big data distributed system shuffling actually is a costly operations because it involves a lot of uh, cpu operations memory and a uh, uh, lot of network input output operations are uh, required so to reduce this one first thing is like we need to reduce the data volume before we entering into the shuffling process like we try to filter out the data as much as possible to uh, to avoid uh, entering the unnecessary data to the shuffling process because it involves a lot of uh, input output uh, operations and we need to optimize the number of shuffle partitions like uh, we need to we, we should understand like how much partition count that will fit for that uh, use case so according to that we need to uh, use the number of, right number of the shuffle partitions we can also avoid the uh, shuffling uh, shuffling to a some level and we need to set like you know partition shuffle partitions between 1 into 4x of number of available uh, cores like usually for the course 1 into 4 we can use and uh, we can use the broadcast join in case of the joins like it is completely eliminate the broad, uh, shuffling process like it will broadcast the data set to the all the executors in the node so that no shuffling is required here so all the data was available within local to its executor so that the join can happen and also we can enable the adaptive query execution so it was this was available in spark 3 onwards so this can this will actually adjust the number of the partitions uh, uh, pre shuffle and post shuffle and also it uh, has many other uh, advantages so we, we need to use this one and also we have to use the calls after uh, shuffling like once you've done the shuffling and if you feel that it has more partitions try to use the calls rather than the repartition so that, that also can reduce the shuffling process if you use the repartition it in involves the shuffling process again and also we can manage the uh, memory and uh, disk input output partitions of the shuffle uh, files like we have some configuration to control the each uh, uh, each shuffled uh, file size so you can also optimize that uh, number and also by monitoring and uh, analyzing the shuffle uh, performance over a period and we'll get to know what are the right numbers so if we can use that number we can uh, try to uh, try to reduce the uh, shuffle uh, data as much as possible and it will improve the performance of the job what are the advantages of using data frames over RDDs? Uh, RDD uh, do not have any uh, structure or any schema, but uh, data frame is something like a table that it has a structure, uh, something like a table in any of the database. Like it has the uh, schema information, like what is a column name, what type of what type it is, and uh, whether it is nullable or not. So since because we have this schema, uh, the data frame underlying the system it uses the catalyst optimizer uh, on tungsten engine. So if you use this uh, to uh, performance optimization it will the performance will be much uh, faster in data frames but the same performance was not achieved using the RDD because it is a uh, uh, structureless so and also uh, on the data frame you can able to convert into the uh, tables and we can uh, run the SQLs directly using uh, as like uh, any database how can you create data frames in Apache spark 
uh, multiple ways we can create the data frames in uh, spark uh, the first one is like from existing rdds like if we have a rdd that was created using the parallelize method so using 2df function uh, we can able to create the uh, data frame and the second one is using create uh, data frame method so we have uh, in spark like create data frame function it requires uh, two uh, two uh, arguments one is like data and other one is schema if you pass this to it will create a uh, data frame and also by reading from external uh, data sources like uh, to read from csv file parquet file json file or other any external files right so we can able to create the data frame and also we can create a data frame by querying the hive tables like using spark.sql function we can directly uh, query the sql tables and it will return the result as uh, data frame so these are all the different uh, ways are available to create a data frame what is the significance of encoders in data sets uh, encoders in spark uh, data plays plays a significant role in the data processing and the uh, transmission uh, especially when we have a structured and semi structured data encoders we can uh, create using the case classes like uh, uh, like case classes and we can give the type of uh, the case class and uh, it the significance like uh, it will provide the type safety uh, compile time uh, safety uh, like it will uh, if you do any type of uh, transformation it will check whether the particular uh, field was available or not uh, so that it will uh, throw an error in the compile time so that you need not to worry uh, so that uh, it, it will maintain the type safety and the performance also it will improve uh, because uh, when when it is doing the serialization and deserialization so since it's already know the schema so the, the performance will be much better and also it can support for uh, complex data types like uh, handling the arrays maps structures and other uh, uh, complex uh, data types and uh, it also works with the uh, catalyst optimizer for the better performance 